What's going on everyone? Welcome to another player rating show here on Back of the Net. We had a thumping 5-0 win over Huddersfield a week ago, followed up by a hard-fought victory over Wickham. And this time, it was another hard-fought, dogged but uninspiring 0-0 draw at Luton. I think it's one of them. I think it's one of them that we'll look back on at the end of the season and think that was a decent point there. Luton are a hard team to break down. They've already, for example, uh, beat Norwich at home comfortably, the only team above us in the league. So they're no mugs and it was always going to be a difficult place to go. But we weren't bang on it. What I will say is that's five clean sheets in a row, which we're not a team that's known for our defensive quality. So definite positives there and plaudits deservedly to the to us as a defensive unit, really. Uh, five clean sheets in a row, which I think goes all the way back to 91, which was when I was born. So it's a, a long time since we've we've managed that feat. So that's impressive. And I think it was probably a fair result. I don't think we've done enough to win the game. I don't think they did either. It was a frustrating one. It, was, it wasn't It was a good watch. It wasn't an entertaining game. But listen, Huddersfield, Wickham, Luton, seven points, no goals conceded, six goals scored. I'd have taken it. And we go into, we'll be second in the league Christmas Day um, in their automatic promotion spots. And I think we all would have taken that at the start of the season. You know, in the top two, most goals scored in the league, haven't conceded too many either. We've got Dom Slanky relatively doing well up front firing. Goalkeeper's been like a new sign in, Lewis Cook running games. I think there's a lot of positives. We've still got players to come back, especially Arnaud Dan Juma, who's going to be key for us. And yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of positives. Um but but we'll get into the we'll get into the player ratings and surprisingly, in my opinion, with third game in a row unchanged, I think it's it's one of them that you can look at and say we perform really well, so it's not surprising in that aspect. But Paul and schedule, so I'm, I'm a little bit surprised to make a few changes. Having said that, we have got a week until Boxing Day, till the next game, so some time to recuperate and refocus. But yeah, it went unchanged again, which obviously meant, as always, we get to start this video on a positive because Asmir Begovic just didn't go. And again, five clean sheets in a row, and as much as the whole team deserve enormous credit, Asmir Begovic, every single game, without fail, he's making a worldly save. Another one, another really good save. And then I think in the second half, he come out well uh, with help from Steve Cook as well. And he's just so commanding. He's the best goalkeeper in the league, without question. And as we always say, like a new sign, and he and just love Asmir. And, and again, from, from Tuesday, he's, I couldn't argue with him being out of the match. But again, you'll see later, he's not quite getting it for me, but... What more could he do? It's another clean sheet, another top save. I'm running out of things to say about the guy. Nine out of ten for Asmir Begovic. Easy as that. It's just copy and paste jobby at the moment. And that with Asmir, in terms of the um, defensive unit, obviously we've got the leader in there, the main man, Stevie Cook. Again, I think as a whole team, um, we've been brilliant defensively, but but Cookie's been been magnificent throughout, so solid, so reliable, so consistent, gets his body on the line, plays out from the back well, he just does everything really well and he's, he's vocal and he's a proper leader out there and keep him fit is going to be key, love what I'm seeing from Cookie at the moment and I've mentioned before, bar that send it off, he, he's against Sheffield Wednesday, he's been he's been superb, he's been top drawer and I thought Cookie was, was immense at the back and to be honest actually I'm going to yeah, I think it's fair. I'm going to give him a nine. I thought, I thought Steve Cook was just a rock. And once again, no faults. Just, just what more can he do, really? Someone that's probably surprised people, obviously, considering this defensive run that we've had in terms of clean sheets, that's been without Chris Meppham of late as well, who's been a consistent performer for us um, with his injury. And it's, it's given Jack Simpson an opportunity and fair play to him. You know, fair play to him at the moment. Regardless of if Meps was back, it'd be hard to drop drop the lad. I think he's he's come in and and he would say, you know, since I've come into the side, we haven't let it go. I play at the back. You know, what more what more do you want? He's been solid. He's been getting getting in the wars as well. You know, making some good good headers, good blocks. Um, yeah, probably if if everyone's fit and you've got a, a cup final or something, is he getting in the team? Probably not because of the competition he's got. But all he can do is perform when he's on the pitch, and for me, he's doing that. Um, I'm more than happy with Simpson. And to be fair, it's another clean sheet. I think we've just got a that's that's going to probably be shown in these ratings because 
it's a like as I said, it's been over twenty five years since we've we've gone on this sort of run defensively with clean sheets, and I think the defensive unit deserve deserve credit for that. And yeah, I, I thought Jack Simpson was solid as anything today, and I'm going to give him an eight out of ten for Jack Simpson, and I'm really really pleased with him um, and how he's doing. To be honest with you, um, the one that I criticised on Tuesday night, um, Lloyd Kelly, because I just felt he sl- he slowed things down. Again, I think he's doing his job defensively. He's making good blocks, good headers, doing the right things from a dis- defensive perspective. And he, he got forward a little bit better today and supported Junior and things like that on that left-hand side. But not quite doing it for me, Lloyd. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm not I'm not sold on, on him yet in that role. Um, and I don't think... I think what we saw kind of when we were playing behind closed doors in the Premier League, I think we saw someone that we thought... Whoa, this lad's got a lot of potential. What a player this guy is. And he can come in and replace Ake as, as best as we could possibly hope for, considering the player Ake is. But I don't think he's hit the levels, personally. Um, it's a difficult one. I think if I if I was forced to play a free and they said Mepham's back, he's absolutely fine. I think I'd go Mep's Cook and Simpson, potentially. Potentially, like I say, I, I, Lloyd Kelly's still a, still a good, good player and... I think he'll he'll regain that form that he saw kind of earlier part of the season, but just not doing it for me. Having said that, I don't think he was he was as poor as he was Tuesday night. He was he was pretty sad, and I'm gonna and once again he is part of that defensive unit, so he deserves credit for that at least. And like I say, I still do believe that he's doing his defensive duties okay. He's just um just feel like he's slowing things down a little bit. I think when Cookie gets the ball, for example, Steve Cookie's getting it. He's trying to look out early. I think Lloyd kind of slows it down and he, he kills it a little bit, but um. Yeah, we'll see on that. Well, I just uh, maybe, you know, I'll be interested to see what everyone else thinks. But he's just um, been underwhelming of late, in my opinion. But uh, 7 out of 10 for Lloyd Kelly, because I still wouldn't say he was bad. I wouldn't say he was bad, but just um, average at best, I would say. Kind of off that right-hand side. And as we will say, with, with Stacey's injury, Smithy is continuing in that role. And um, it's a difficult one with Smithy, because I just... I feel he's reliable in the sense that, you know, what you're going to get, you know, you're going to get 100%, you're going to get energy, you're going to get, you know, f- just flying into things and, and working his socks off throughout and giving us that option. But um, I don't think he was involved as much as he would have liked, especially from an offensive um, point. And yeah, one is one his best performance, like I say, he was he wasn't bad. And he is still kind of part of that defensive unit as well. That And he's doing, he's doing his job well. Just, just nothing... It's a really difficult one today. I feel like we can always, almost go through this video in five minutes because it really was a game of nothing in terms of chances. Not really big of it's made uh, one or two decent saves. We had a lot of the ball, a lot of chances, but their keeper didn't have an awful lot to do. It was it was a real snooze fest of a football match, um, unfortunately. But in terms of Smithy, I'm just going to go go with a 7 out of 10 for him as well. I thought he was pretty average today, but um, you know what you're going to get from Smithy, and that is... That is all heart, all fight throughout. Um, Blake that was very much in the in the talk of the last game, the match winner Junior Stanislas from Tuesday night, and then obviously the little rumpus at the end with with Sammy Surridge. Um, I thought he was trying to make things happen, you know. I, I don't don't get me wrong. He he, he wasn't his final pass, his final decision making wasn't always there, but I still feel like he's always trying to make something happen. And he was brought off in the in the first change, which was a double change. Um, him and Billing came off for. Sam Surridge and Diego Rico, and I was actually a little bit surprised that um, that Stanislas came off instead of potentially Brooks. I thought Stanislas was giving us more. Actually, he probably had our only half decent chances from free kicks. To be honest, he had one just over, and one was comfortable for the goalkeeper. But he always tries to make something happen, Junior. You still got to watch out for his fitness levels. I I appreciate that, um, and he does put a shift in defensively. I think he does help from that point of view, but. But yeah, it was pretty, once again, it was pretty average from Junior, but I don't think he was bad. But um, like I say, all these players have set the bar really high and it was more of a, a dogged kind of grinding out display, one that uh, nothing too creative and exciting to, to see. But like I say, credit to Luton and that as well. Um, they they put on a decent display, but yeah, another one. Just going to give them a seven. Like, these are probably a little bit, um, probably a little bit kind to be fair, but... I don't know. I still think Julia tries to make things happen. Sometimes it's just not your day. But um, I feel like anything below a seven means they've had a really, really off day. And I don't think Julia was really bad. Do you know what I mean? I just think he was average. And I know people will say, well, five is average. But um, it's my rules. And 
I normally give seven as more of an average display, to be fair. But um, into the into the more central areas of midfield, and now we're going. Now we're going to lift the spirits a little bit because you all know what's coming. It's Lewis Cook. Lewis Cook. Once again, I gave it to him on Tuesday. I've given it to him again. He's man of the match. He's man of the match. It's it's not even a question, really. Like I said, the only one that's running him close really is is Begovic in terms of them big moment, big big saves in in games, but. Lewis Cook's just running football matches and these um big tackles today as well, some really big tackles he's putting he's putting his body on the line, he wants it, and then he's he's the one that's trying to make things happen. He was driving on, he had a he had a decent effort that just went wide as well. He's he's trying to do everything and he's doing it pretty well. Um best midfielder in the league, isn't he? What more can we say? He's he's been fantastic and just please stay fit because this guy is showing us what what we knew he had. They want for them injuries and things like that, and now he's getting that run on the side in this role that I still think JT deserves a lot of credit for because it's getting the best out of him. And he's the the normal Begovic. He's he's one of the first names on the team sheet in the and he's my man of the match again. Uh, let me know if you agree, but can't see anyone disagreeing with the fact that Lewis Cook was brilliant again. Um, Nine out of ten for Lewis. If he had put in that strike he put in, he would have got a ten easy. But yeah, Lewis great again. This one saddens me a little bit. Because everyone knows I love him, Jefferson Lerma. Thought he was off it. I thought he was off it. Um, yeah, I really did. I just, I think for his high standards, I just thought he wasn't quite his tenacious self, break up the play, using the ball well. Just wasn't quite to them levels, in my opinion. Um, wasn't awful, but but wasn't quite the races, in my opinion. And um, yeah, he's another one that, that the, the standards are so high. He wasn't wasn't. Um, horrendous, like I say, he was just just average, which I think was the was the whole scheme of this of this game. To be honest with you, I think it's almost a one of the, it's the first one I've done um, where I've just kind of thought a bit because just everything was just pretty average apart from your Lewis Cook and and Asmir Begovic. To be honest, and once you go past the defenders, you're kind of getting a bit like wasn't a lot there. Um, still does the basics well and and. And still, he's still a key player in the side, isn't he? And you still didn't really want to take him off. But um, for his standards, he was a bit off it. I don't know whether I should go as low as a six, you know. Do I go as low as a six? I'm going to. I'm going to. Because Jefferson Lerma's performances are so good, I think, nay, he, he really dropped below them. Really dropped below them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a six, which um, still is horrific. But yeah, for his standards, not quite at it. Uh, Billings another Billings another one that was brilliant. But I actually thought in the first half, Billings was trying to make a few things happen. He, he he beat a few men. He made some decent passes. He was trying to make things happen a little bit, and then he faded and uh, didn't really make an impact in the second half. Wouldn't be surprised if if we do decide to make a few changes on Boxing Day. If if Billy maybe comes out, I think he's performed performed well in terms of he was really off it one day at the start of the season. Couldn't get anywhere near the team and. He earned the right to get back in there with that performance at Barnsley in goal, but I still think he's he's not been absolutely outstanding to the likes of Lewis. He's still not knocking on the door of Lewis Cook and Lerma if you've got two in there, do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if we maybe go over a, a different system, maybe get another offensive player up there, or even give Gods an opportunity, because when Gods was given an opportunity, say, at Coventry, he was brilliant. So um, that wouldn't surprise me, but but bidding was... And because of the, the fact that I just gave Lerma a six, so he was... He was no better than Lerma, in my opinion. So, um, six out of ten for Phil Billing. More, um, this is the one that I think he was the poorest player on the pitch, David Brooks. Surprised he stayed on for as long as he did. He did come off in the end for um, Roro, Raquel May. But, um, yeah, I just I don't know what happened today. He was um, in possession. He lost it a lot of times. A lot of the times we, we lost possession, I thought it's Brooksy again. Decision making one there. I think it was something like his 12th game in a row, maybe, might be 11. I think it was his 12th game in a row. That's a lot for a player who's had some injury problems, and I just wonder if he's looking a little bit leggy, maybe a little bit burnt out. And uh, yeah, I, I felt today might be one that he, w he was rotated. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case on Boxing Day, but. He's still a player you kind of uh, you don't really want to take him off, which is kind of why I thought maybe we'd start him on the bench and he'd be a good impact off it. Because even when he's not playing well, you think, oh, I don't really want to take him off. Um, because we know we know what he can give you. But 
he won he won at it. He he was he was poor. He wasn't even average. I thought he was he was below average in my opinion. Um, and we know the standards he sets. Um, I still love Brooksy. Just one of them games, wasn't it? And uh, so it's a it's a five out of ten for Brooksy for me. Uh, yeah, disappointed with him today. And uh, the man that I feel a little bit sorry for at the moment is um, Dom Solanke because he just feel he just feels really isolated. I thought it on Tuesday and definitely against Luton. I just I just thought he was he looked so much better when Surridge to come on and he, he needed a partner um, or at least someone just getting a little bit closer to him. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes you don't necessarily need a partner, but someone like say Dan Juma who's obviously been out a while, but he gets a little bit close to him. I don't think Brooksy helped him. Um, he did really get a lot. Service when he got the ball, he tried his best. You know, I don't think it's all down to Dom, to be honest with you. I don't just don't think he really got much. But having said that, he, he wouldn't have been delighted with his performance either. But um, yeah, I'm trying to give more as much as you defend from the front. I'm trying to give more praise in this one to the defensive unit and um, highlight the fact that we didn't create enough and weren't good enough offensively. So, so for that, I'm going to give Dom a six. But like I say, I don't um, think it was all down to him personally. Another one that might need a bit of rotation, I believe he's the only player in our side that's that's been involved in every single league game. Um but yeah it was it was tough for him today. For sure. For sure. And I mean like I said, I'm not really gonna get into the into the subs. I thought I thought Rico and, and Roro done okay when they come on. I thought Cyrus was good. He, he always is uh, without being fantastic himself. He just gives us something different. It makes Dom look better. It it gives the defenders something else to worry about. He he runs channels. He's and he's got start. In in my opinion he's got to start on Boxing Day, since since he got man match, he hadn't started, and now for me, he's got at home Boxing Day against Millwall, a game that we should be taking to the opposition. I appreciate today looting away, difficult one. I appreciated Swansea away from home, but no, I'm not having that Millwall at home. I, I, I want Surridge in there. Um, obviously, we don't know about fitness and things like that, but lean up to that. But if if he's if he's fit and ready and available, which he seems to be. For me, he's got to come in regardless of who you leave out. If you leave out, if you rotate Brooksy, as I mentioned, if you rotate Phil Billard, even if you rotate Junior Stanislas, even if you rotate Dom Slanky, I'd rather that not be the case. But I did just mention he's he's played a lot of football. But for me, I want so I want Sorridge and Solanke. I want I want them together um, with a with a Brooksy or Junior kind of in behind them. Then too, I just feel like we need that sometimes. I think sometimes. When defenders have the ball, is not much on. We need an out ball. We need we need Sorridge doing them runs into the channels and and supporting Dom and, and giving him a little bit more really. So um, that's something that I like to see and um, I'm hoping Jason does that in terms of Jason. Um, fair play to him for the record. Uh, the five clean sheets in a row deserves credit for that. Deserves credit for I think it's a it's a good point to say you know that was the last game until after Christmas. So it's a, it's a good good point to kind of evaluating things and. Probably go into it a little bit more in when it actually the turn of the year, but yeah, I think as I mentioned at the start of the video, listen, we're second in the league. If it stopped now, we're in the Premier League. If it stopped now, we're we're back up there. We're in automatic promotion spots. We've scored the most goals in the league, so you can't say we're not we're not still giving that offensively. We we've scored scored the most in the league. I think Blackburn might be second, but we've definitely scored the most. Um, like I say, fifth clean sheet on the bounce, looking pretty hard to beat as well. Getting good results, even like this Luton game where we were definitely off it. And when you're off it and you can't win the game, don't lose. And we didn't. And that's that's a big plus, big plus. Um, team that's top of the league, Norwich, we've beaten them. Um, we've gone to Watford, we've got a good point there. We went to Swansea, we've got a good point there. We've had Red and we beat them. We've had Bristol City, we've beat them. There's We've had Blackburn, we've beat them. We've had some really good... Uh, good performances and, and got some really tough games out of the way as well. Um, don't get me wrong, it's the championship um, as we've seen. Anyone could be anyone, but what we'll say is it's it's been a. I'd have taken it. I'd have taken it absolutely. Um, if you'd offer me all them things, I'd have definitely taken it. He's um, yeah, he's getting the best out of a lot of players. Like I say, let's be honest, the best players this season. I mean, I, I think Steve Cook's been very good and things like that, but I think Dom Slanky as well. Arnie's had a spell, but I think if you if it boiled down to it. It would be two people, Asmir Begovic and Lewis Cook as our player of the season so far. If anyone disagrees, then please say, but it's got to be for me. Um, Asmir Begovic was not in our plans. Asmir Begovic looked like he'd probably never play for Bournemouth again. Jason Tindall decided to bring him back. He's made him the number one. He's given him the opportunity and he is rewarding him and us. Jason Tindall deserves huge credit for that, obviously, as does Asmir Begovic. Uh, the next player I said, Lewis Cook. 
has been given the responsibility of the manager to play week in, week out, and to be given a new role that he hasn't played since he's been at the club, and he's flourishing. Another tick for JT, in my opinion. So, so for me, I think we should look at that. The two players that have probably been our standouts have been given that opportunity in the first place by Jason, and I think he deserves enormous praise for that. Um, it's, his, it's his first proper job, and uh, he's learning on the job as well, and I think he's I think he's doing really well. I think he's making good changes in games and things like that. And Yeah. Really happy with him, but in terms of in terms of this game, I'm I'm just going to give him a seven because we went out there, we were hard to beat, and we, we got a decent point, but we didn't do enough going forward to try and win the game. So, um, but yeah, maybe in hindsight, would he have rotated a few things? Probably, but could I see why he wanted to go unchanged with the with the run we've been on? Yeah, of course I could. So, um, I think that's fair, but but yeah, it's uh, that's it until till after Christmas now. So this is the that's why I just got out of the tie for you today. Comment on the tie. Well, actually, this tie with them Christmas socks. I agree. It's a ten. It's a ten. But yeah, I um. Well, obviously, it's Boxing Day, and uh, we've had all these new rules about I don't know what tiers they are anymore. It's a difficult time. Um, I think I think it won't be too long until we get I don't know tier seven and. Boris is coming round and individually tying all our shoelaces together so we can't go out. But um, it's a weird time, isn't it? But um, I'm pretty sure I can still go box today. We'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure that's all right. I've um, been fortunate enough to, to get lucky in the ballot again. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. And uh, hope you all enjoy enjoy your Christmas. As I say, I've, I've really enjoyed doing all these videos and get some more guests on, on that um, afterwards. Just sometimes, you know, just getting a quick video out there. Hard to organise, but I sort it out and... I'm sure I'll get some new faces on here as well. But yeah, really enjoyed it. And uh, keep the feedback up as well. Let me know what you think. And that's an interesting one going. Because who's been your kind of standout um, up until Christmas, really? Do you agree? Lewis Cook or Asmir Begovic? Is there anyone that surprised you um, in a good way? Is there anyone? So like for me, he's injured at the moment. I think Meps has been very good. I think he's gone under the radar a little bit. I think of late, you can definitely make a point for Jack Simpson. Pleasantly surprised me coming into the team and doing really well. Um I think Diego's been pretty consistent, to be honest, um, but hasn't hasn't been inside of much as late of late. Um, Dom's pleasantly surprised me recently, getting a few more goals, which is really good to see. Obviously, Begovic and obviously Lewis Cook. Lewis Cook hasn't surprised me, to be fair. We know he's got in got that in him. Um, but yeah, let me know everyone's kind of verdicts so far, and um, yeah, where 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 you think. Do you think we'll we'll get their more max spots? Do you think we can do it? I'd, I'd certainly do. I certainly think we're capable. I've just seen actually that Watford have very surprisingly sat their manager after a defeat. That's something like five managers in less than two years. It's five managers, fifteen months, something like that. I think I saw is absolute madness. And I for one am pleased we're not like that. But um, yeah, listen, they've sat their manager again, which they might get a little bit of a. What's the word? That little kind of bounce that you get from a new manager potentially. So they might be hot on our heels again soon after after dropping off. Because weirdly, we we feel like we've kind of dropped two points in terms of drawing. But because Watford lost, we've gained a point on them. So it's is a weird one. And like we say, we know what this league's this league's all about. So um, yeah, we just got to keep going ourselves. And at the moment, we're doing we're doing all right. We're getting the job done at the moment. And I'm um, confident Boxing Day that we'll get the job done against Millwall. That's a game we've got to go and win in my opinion, and I'm more than positive that we will do so. But as I say, it's going to be a tough time. hope you can all spend it with as much of your families as possible and as much of you can be there on Boxing Day as well. If you're not, I'm sure you'll be, you know, watch along with SBTV and all that and and keeping keeping up with what's going on. But yeah, hope you all have a good Christmas. It's a difficult time. And as I always say, in terms of everyone's mental health and mental well-being and things like that, it's, it's really difficult. It's challenging. It's been a challenging year and it's, not getting any easier at the moment and uh, always chat me a message on, on Twitter or whatever if, uh, if you want to chat, if you want to just have a boring chat about football, you know I can do that. I've done it for nearly 25 minutes already on my own. So um, more than capable, even after a nil-nil bore draw. So um, yeah, always feel free to chat. Um, appreciate the love on the tie, which I haven't even seen yet, but I know I'm going to get the love. So I appreciate that as well. But yeah, a Merry Christmas to you all and look forward to seeing as many of you as I can who have been lucky enough to go on Boxing Day. But keep up the positive vibes. We're second in the league. We are going back up. Trust me. I told you here first. Merry Christmas. Up the cherries.